everyone, it's Amy from thecrazycraftlady.com. I am here in my kitchen. About 20 minutes ago, I filmed a review or one year review of our painted kitchen countertops and I explained why they are not for us and we're moving on with a different plan. As you can see down here, uh, the paint is wearing away. We had an issue with a glow stick that leaked. So we're just, instead of trying to to repaint, we're gonna go a different route. I wasn't thrilled with um, how white the counters were because white is uh, prone to staining and that was that's not family friendly. When you have two little kids running around, white kitchens aren't super practical. Um, as you can see, this wall behind me is painted green, um, which I just recently did. So I'm trying to kind of maybe darken things up, make things feel a little bit more cozy and um, a little bit more natural in here. So we're gonna do concrete, which I have done before in our old house, our old rental maybe five years ago, um, when concrete countertops were first becoming kind of popular. I was super excited and I loved the look of them, but at the time we were in a rental. So what I did is I took an inexpensive Ikea kitchen table and this is actually leftover from that project. So I'm gonna show you what I used on that. I used Henry Feather Finish, which is kind of the standard, which you can get at Home Depot, to skim coat on the table, and then I sealed it with this Chang Concrete Countertop Sealer. Loved it. The table, I still have it. It's not in our dining room anymore. It's actually up in my craft room. Um, it held up great for the entire time we were in our rental. During the move, it got a little banged up because it is such a thin coat. Um, and when we moved, it was, you guys, it was a super hot day and our movers were exhausted and the table got a little banged up. So on the edges, there's just a few spots where the concrete is chipped off and you can see the wood underneath. At some point, I should probably repair that, but it's my craft table now, so it's covered with paint and hot glue anyway, so it's not a high priority. But so for that, I just mixed, I, I roughed up the table, I sanded it down, I mixed Henry Feather Finish with water till it was like a paste consistency and I spread it. You know, you do a thin layer, sand it down, thin layer, sand it down, another thin layer, sand it down. Um, and then I sealed it with this Food Safe um, countertop sealer. So that worked really well for my table. I'm doing something a little bit differently this time. I have leftover, but I'm not sure I have enough leftover to do my full countertop project. So that's why I switched to this. It's called Feather Edge Pro. The reason why I'm not doing feather finish again is because. I went to Menards for this project. I live in Minnesota in the Midwest. If you're familiar with um, Minnesota home improvement stores, uh, you know the familiar jingle of save big money at Menards and that's our closest home improvement store. So that's where I went. I bought Feather Edge Pro and when I was at Menards, I actually made a friend in the concrete aisle, um, a gentleman who actually does this for a living. And he said, he recommended that I put down wire mesh on the countertop beforehand, which I'm not going to do because that's just overwhelming. He's like, you just staple the wire mesh to the counter and then you skim coat over it. Seems simple. But he also recommended, which I wouldn't have thought to do, is to instead of mixing your uh, concrete powder with water, you mix it with this additive. And this is a concrete bonding additive. And this is the brand that was recommended on the label of this um, concrete skim coat to mix with it. So I'm gonna do that this time and hopefully maybe get better bonding and maybe a little bit more durable of a countertop. So I'm gonna go change into my grubby clothes and prep everything and I'm gonna walk you through the whole process of prepping, sanding, um, and applying the concrete. So here we go. done a preliminary sanding um, of my countertop. Really tricky to get behind the sink, but that's okay. I think I'll just go in with like a sanding block. I And then I uh, vacuumed everything down with my shop vac. I would not use like your home vacuum attachment because it'll, this really fine dust is really bad for regular vacuums, but I did use my shop vac. So I'm going to finish sanding the rest of the countertops. 
and then wipe everything with, down with a damp cloth before I move on to step two. But I will just say, like, this is the only time I swear in your life that you get to do a horrible job of sanding. Normally, you want, like, a nice smooth surface, and you don't want to let the sander sit in one spot for too long. And it's quite the opposite when you're sanding down your countertops to do a concrete overlay because you really want to rough it up as much as possible. So a lot of times I would like, you can see we're left like marks and streaks. That's totally fine. You can see I need to wipe this off. My hands are getting dusty. Um, you just want to rough this up as much as possible. Take the sheen off your laminate. If you're dealing with laminate, just take the shine off and rough it up so that concrete um, has something to stick to. Okay, so now I've got my counters completely prepped. They're sanded. I wipe them off really well with a damp cloth. So everything's roughed up and ready to go. So now I'm going to mix my concrete. And so I've got my Feather Edge Pro put on my goggles because apparently that's what the directions say. I'm also going to put on gloves because apparently this stuff is not supposed to make contact with your skin. So that's why I've got long sleeves on, I've got long pants on, and I'm going to wear gloves. And if you can hear my kids in the background, that's because they just got home from school and they are wild and crazy in their playroom. So I apologize in advance. Okay, so I'm not actually not going to do any measuring because I'm going to go more on consistency than anything. So last time I mixed the concrete powder with water. Based on the advice of the handy person at the home improvement store that I talked to who does this for a living and the directions, instead of using water, I'm going to substitute with this concrete bonding additive. So hopefully that'll make my counters a little bit more durable and last a little bit longer. Okay, so I'm just going to Work in small batches. The directions say not to mix up more concrete than you could use in like 15 or 20 minutes because it starts to dry. So I'm just gonna scoop a little powder and then I'm just gonna add my additive instead of water and slowly mix. So like I said, I'm not doing any formal measurements because I'm gonna go based on consistency just because I've done this before. You want it to be like a spreadable paste, almost like frosting, like buttercream frosting. You don't want it to be runny, but you want it to be um, smooth enough to spread. So there we go. That's a pretty good consistency. As you can see, it's like frosting. I don't know how else to describe it. It's not like cake batter, thicker than that, but thinner than Play-Doh. Okay, so then I've got my little tools here. I just got like a, I don't know, I don't know, a trowel and a scraper. You can use whatever you want. I remember on my last one on on the edges I didn't have like a small scraping tool so I used like a cake frosting spreader. Use what I mean whatever whatever you got. But on this one I'm going to use this wider one. I bought this so that I can smooth out the larger sections. And then so I'm going to scrape that off. And then you just want to dump out the concrete. There we go. Okay. And then you just want to spread out a real thin coat all across your counters. So this countertop is a little tricky because I've got this lip up here, but I'm going to make it work. And with the first coat, you're not going to have complete coverage. So you almost want part of the countertop to peek through because you want to work in real thin layers. So I'm going to work as quick as I can. 
and smooth this all the way out. You notice I didn't tape off the edge of my sink here because I'm just going to go right up to the edge. And then when this is all done, I'm going to recock my sink anyway. So that's why I'm not taking this too seriously. Okay, and then when I get back up here to my backsplash, I'm going to go right up to the back. And then I'm going to smooth up. And then I'm going to take just a little bit and start right at the edge and smooth it around. This is kind of more art and science, so just kind of play around with it until you get smooth coverage. Okay, so it's the next morning. I let everything dry overnight. It probably didn't need to dry overnight, but I wasn't going to get up at 4 o'clock this morning and do another coat of concrete before the kids went to school. So here we are. So I'm going to take medium grit sandpaper and just lightly sand this down just to get rid of any obvious rough spots. I'm not going to do... I'm not going to get too crazy with the sanding because it makes a big old mess. It's very dusty and... This isn't poured concrete. If you think that you're gonna be able to smooth this and make it look like poured concrete, you are gonna drive yourself absolutely batty. It's just not possible. I think the best approach with these concrete countertops is to recognize that it's gonna look rustic, it's gonna look a little textured. That's part of the charm. It kind of looks like natural stone that way. I'm okay with it. So I'm just going to sand off like obvious rough spots and then I'm going to mix up another batch of concrete and smooth another coat. I'm hoping that I'll be able to do this with a total of three coats, no more.
Okay, so I did two coats with the sealer. Well, actually, I did three or four coats because I did this watered down and then I like did several coats until I got it to full strength. And then I waxed the countertops with this wax sealer. I don't think I did enough coats. I don't know if, so this is a new bottle of the concrete sealer. When I sealed my counters, I used what was left over from my counter or from my kitchen table a couple years ago. So I think maybe the sealer was just old because every morning I make a smoothie. And after I make my smoothie, I rinse out my blender and I set it on this drying mat here. And so like I set my blender like this upside down and then I go to like work for the day and it dries. Well, it let, because this was sitting wet, you can see that's the shape of my blender there. It like discolored. I think what it did is it made like the wax beat up. I'm not entirely certain. I didn't really have this problem with my kitchen table when I did it. So I think what the problem was, was that my sealer was old and I didn't do enough coats. So I'm going to wipe down. I'm going to clear off all this wax and then I'm going to do probably four coats of this sealer because I have a brand new bottle. And I think that'll kind of help with some of this discoloration issue from the water. Okay, here we are. Final update. Look how shiny these counters are. Isn't that great, you guys? Okay, so I actually went back, I scoured down the counters and I did four more coats of the concrete sealer. In hindsight, I probably would have only done three because coat four started getting kind of bubbly, but not horrible. So what I would recommend doing is following the instructions on here, doing the two coats that they recommend plus an additional three to get like that true waterproof finish. You'll see how shiny it is. You can kind of see the reflection. So now no more blender issues, no problems with water. I've actually had pools of water sit on this counter surface overnight and it leaves no staining, no discoloration. You can see kind of discoloration there. That's just for my different layers with my skim coat. Like I said, this is never gonna look like poured concrete. But overall, I'm very, very, very happy with how my countertops turned out. And then the final thing that I will mention is um, I know these countertops look dark. I really like the dark gray. It's a very warm gray color. And I think that's just because I used a different brand of skim coat. So I also used um, the same technique on my kid's play table using the Henry Feather finish. So I'm sharing a photo here of the countertop and the tabletop side by side so you can see how much lighter the Henry Feather finish is. So something to bear in mind when you're choosing your brand of skim coat is that the colors might be different. So just choose what works best for you and happy making. <laughs>